When you think of a great villain, your mind usually goes to a character from a movie. Darth Vader, Voldemort, Scar, Jason, Joker, the list goes on. But why doesn't an antagonist from a video game come up? I mean, you're the one actually fighting them after all. Video games have a tendency to make the main bad guy forgettable. And some developers forget that a lot more goes into a villain than designing them big and scary. There are some exceptions, but today I want to talk about one of the most memorable villains in gaming, and what made Voss from Far Cry 3 become an icon. What's so impressive about Voss is that he only has a little less than 11 minutes of screen time. Yeah, from start to finish, Voss is barely even in the game. But he was front and center on all the advertisements. They even went so far as to put him on the cover. And yet, he's in it less than 11 minutes in a 20 hour game. One of the ways that Ubisoft was able to achieve memorability with so little screen time was his off-screen presence. Well, you don't see Voss very often, you always hear about him. Everyone on the island knows about Voss, and they always have a story to tell. After hearing about him for so long without seeing him yourself, he starts to become this larger-than-life figure. He seems unbeatable, and the player creates this mythos of who he is and what his story is. It's not enough to just hear stories, though. You get to see the real destruction that someone like Voss leaves behind. Burnt down villages, piles of dead bodies, and tortured slaves. Even though he isn't doing this himself, you still blame Voss for it, and you begin to love to hate him. As you progress further into the story, Jason starts to gain confidence, and that makes the player even more eager to hunt down the mastermind behind all of this. But the game keeps you on edge. They remind you you're still his prey, and he could show up at any time. You've heard so much about him, built him up in your head, and when you finally come face to face with him, it's terrifying. This is what really works by holding back and only having him in the game for a fraction of the time. It's a rare occurrence, so when he does show up, you hold your breath. Not because he's a demon or an alien, but because he has a reputation. Throughout the entire game, you're told how crazy he is, and when you see him again, his reputation precedes him. The first time you meet him, he gives you just a taste of insanity. There is no rhyme or reason for his actions. He'll shoot your brother in the head, but let you run free. Go from calm to furious for seemingly no reason. Kill without any hesitation. We're not used to this unexpectedness. Villains, especially in video games, are usually one-dimensional, mustache-twirling bad guys who have no motivation other than wanting to destroy the world. Voss doesn't follow this format. Sure, he's trying to make money by selling you into slavery, but it's not what's making him act like this. He truly is off the rails, but calculated in his execution. He is often compared to the Joker in that aspect. Both characters are insane, but when they want to do something, they do it. At one point of the game, you have to fight a corrupted military while they're kidnapping some of the locals in an armored truck. Jason and the other locals go through all the effort to attack this armored truck and chase it down, but when Jason opens the back door, it's just Voss waiting for him. He didn't need to go through all that effort, but he doesn't think like a normal person. It's not enough to capture Jason, he needs to prove a point. Anytime Voss is on screen, he demands your full attention, and it couldn't be easier to give thanks to the amazing voice work of Michael Mando. You might know him now from his role as Scorpion in Spider-Man Homecoming, or Nacho from Better Call Saul, but before he was any of those, he was Voss Montenegro. Michael brought Voss to life with his amazing performance. Being able to change emotions on a dime truly brought out the insanity of Voss. Michael was also allowed to improvise some of his lines. Uh, the writers did a great job, so already I had a great base to work on. And I was given a lot of freedom to improvise, to ad lib, to change a few things in the blocking. This made the performance feel so much more authentic, and of course, the lines that were written were pure gold. Did I ever tell you the definition of insanity? I want to go back to the start of this video, where I was talking about movie villains. Darth Vader, arguably the most famous villain of all time, shares these three qualities with Voss. In the first movie, he's only on screen for 8 minutes, but he's always talked about and has a looming presence, and when he is on screen, your eyes are glued to him. It also goes without saying that James Earl Jones is the voice of Darth Vader, and he wouldn't be as big of an icon if he wasn't. It's no coincidence that Voss shares these qualities with Vader, and both of them are commonly known as the best villains in the respect of media, so if you want to make an antagonist memorable, their off-screen presence, rarity on-screen, and an amazing voice actor is a good place to start.